Glory nodded and trotted over to her. I'd accomplished... well, something. Fluttershy Medical shouldn't be a problem. Oh, don't start thinking about that, Blackjack. Still, I could think of a finer place in Equestria to suck out all the radiation swirling around inside me. Once Lacuna picked a location out of my memories, we could teleport straight there. After all, there was plenty of radiation around here for her to soak up. If the worst came to worst, she could tap that crystal and silver bullet together a few times and hopefully not blow up. Now for the harder step. Getting to Elder Crunchy Carrots and negotiating an end to all this. And for that, I needed a plan. Giving myself up to this acolyte might get me in. Or it might get me killed. More importantly, it might get my friends killed. Crap. I couldn't just hand myself over and make it up on the fly. I had to think. Think of something. I looked at Glory as she tried to convince Scotch to drink the rat away. She made me smile as she explained the effects of radiation poisoning, and that smile only continued as my eyes trailed along to her flank. Her sweet, sweet... There was a flickering blob going off in my brain. Shit. Would that work? I trot towards scotch tape. Hey, I said as she fidgeted with the pouch. I hate this stuff. It tastes like butt and makes me pee rainbows. She muttered sullenly. Radiation never hurt. I looked at the olive filly with a small smile, arched a brow, and pulled back my left sleeve to show her the mottled, growth-laden surface. It looked like one solid bruise, yellow with ugly greenish-red blotches beneath the skin. Glory looked alarmed, but I shook my head. Now was no time to play doctor. Scotch took the hint and started drinking the orange medicine with a sour look. Sorry about messing up your head, I said as I sat down beside her. I just wanted you to be happy. Guess I fucked that up, huh? Glory rolled her eyes as she trod away, muttering something about language. You'd be happy if someone messed up your head? Scotch Tape asked. Are you kidding? I'd be bouncing on my hooves happy. I lied. I couldn't tell if she believed me or not as she looked down at the pouch of medicine. I need you to do something for me, Scotch. And it's something no pony else can do. You're going to ask me to stay behind so I can stay safe. Again? She grumbled. Why does every pony insist on treating me like a baby? I can disassemble a sewage pump in 15 minutes with two wrenches and a hammer. Then she sighed. I'm going to end up with a toilet for a cutie mark, aren't I? Be nice to find a working one, that's for sure, I teased softly, musing, I'm messing her short blue mane. And I'm going to ask you to stay behind, but not because I want to keep you safe. I have to go meet with the rangers. If everything works out, well, it works out, then great. But if it doesn't, the only pony who can end this war will be you. Understand? I told her my plan, and she found a way to make it work. Well, up to a point. Still, this is crazy, Blackjack. What if they just shoot you? Then they're smarter ponies than me. I replied with a smile and kissed her brow. You know we care about you, right? She flushed a little. Yeah, just don't get dead, Blackjack. There ain't many 99 ponies left. There's P-21, I replied. He doesn't count. He hates me, she muttered. I sighed. He doesn't hate you. At least he better not. He just has a hard time with things that remind him of 99. It wasn't easy for him there. I know. Colts are weird, she said, rolling her eyes. Tell me about it. I said with a smile. Then I sighed again. I need you to hold on to something for me, okay? This is an IF-33 with an expanded magazine. It was my mom's. If something should happen, I don't want the rangers to have it. Just be careful when you fire it. It's got a whole lot more kick than that dinky 9mm Paris Bright you shoot. She took care of it... Um, she took with the care of someone who respected a machine, and that could hurt you. I appreciated that. There's one last thing I need you to do. You're not going to like it, 
but you're the only pony who can pull it off. She looked intrigued as I took a breath and said, I need you to act scared, so Glory will stay behind. I couldn't bear to see her in another situation like the one at Flash Industries. For a moment, she looked confused and then annoyed, but finally she seemed to understand and gave a little smile and a roll of her eyes. Great. More time with the most boring pony in the wasteland. I thumped her softly on the head. Maybe. But she's my mare friend, so be nice. Scotch tape stuck her tongue out at me. And finish your medicine. Remember, it's not a rainbow if you don't hit all six colors. She smiled crookedly as she wrinkled her nose. You gross, Blackjack. And every pony thinks I'm the filly. I chuckled and then clattered back towards the others. You and P-21 both, kid. Okay. We actually have a plan, B, so P-21 and Rampage are with me again. Glory, Lacuna, and Scotch are here. And Q in three, two... Absolutely not! I'm coming with you! Glory said firmly, frowning. You have to stay here. Scotch is freaking out, and if rangers come up here, I need you to help fight them off. I said, as I glanced at my shoulder at Scotch. She mouthed the words with impudent annoyance before she caught my glare and suddenly gave Glory a big-eyed look that just screamed, Look at me, I'm helpless. And if Steel Rain got his hooves on Glory, I'd give him EC-1101 and tell the Elder that Big Daddy had planned to turn her into a hat if I had to. Glory sure didn't like it, but I knew that she had hoof cuffs. I'd use them if I had to. So, not just a plan A. But a plan B? P-21 asked with a thin smile. And a plan C, I replied. Yep, I'm just brimming with the whole plans thing. Of course, knowing me and how my plans worked out. Yeah. Let's get started before I have to worry about a plan D. The dry docks were basically four giant long buildings covered in rust and salt. Huge cranes hung on gantries overhead, silently waiting to resume work on ships that would never be completed. All the locks had failed, filling the rooms with the reek of blackish water. The place had power and tools, though, and that, I supposed, was all that mattered. Most of the noise was coming from one corner of the cavernous space. We had everything ready, or at least as ready as it would ever get. My pit buck was covered with duct tape, that was uh, obsensible, and to a degree, actually, holding the brace on that leg on. Everything else had been left behind with the other three. Glory's starting to feel left out. She misses out on the whole terror and now all the suicidal strut. Rampage said as I limped along beside her. If things went stupid, she was our plan D. Water poured through holes in the roof in cascading columns as we stepped over heaps of rusted chain and bolts. A huge faded mural of Applejack in a sailor's outfit saluted us all over the motto, Victory Through Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Yeah, but she gets to have sex with me, so she can't complain, I retorted. I didn't want to spook them and started off the shooty. I was... Nervously, a uh, nervous going in unarmed. I didn't even have a fancy sword. You're that good? Rampage asked with a smirk. No, but she is, I replied. Well then, maybe I should have sex with her and find out for myself when you're gone, Rampage said, her smirk transforming into a naughty grin. I rolled my eyes and snorted. Be my guest. She loves it when you nibble on, Can we please cut out the lesbian sexcapade chit-chat while we walk towards an enemy that wants to kill us? P-21 said tersely, his already bristling mane frizzling even more. I don't even know why I'm here. You're here for when this chief acolyte commits his sudden and inevitable betrayal, I replied. His name was Napalm Strike. It hardly seemed trustworthy to me. Next question. What is the plan if the Elder says, thank you for your concern, I'm going to shoot you anyway? 
because that's the step I'm missing, he said sourly. I shoot her in the face, and we run for our lives and hope Lacuna can swoop in and port us to safety. Then we shut down the rangers, I said firmly. You're siding with the Reapers, Rampage asked with pleasant surprise. I snorted. I'm siding with whoever has less stupid and f kills fewer innocent ponies. Right now, Steel Rain trumps Psycho Shy in both departments. We stepped into a few of ten or so unicorns handling all kinds of strange techie equipment while fixing up suits of power armor. They all froze at the sight of us. Hi, I'm Security. I'm looking for Napalm Strike. For several seconds, they just looked at each other and then us. They were clearly not ponies who expected three dangerous, wanted strangers to trot up onto them. I rose and put my hooves into the air. We're giving up? A power-armored pony pointed a Gatling gun at us, and I readied myself for sharp and painful death. Then an older-looking buck in red robes trot towards me, looking quite put out. I'm Chief Aqualite Strike. What are you doing here? How did you get inside our perimeter? He looked at Rampage with alarm. You're that Reaper. The Immortal One. <sighs> you survive being put through a wood chipper and suddenly you're famous. Rampage said with a chuckle as she shook some rusty salt water off her hoof. I'm just glad they recognized me without the armor. We're here to speak to your leader about halting this war, I said and the flat look he gave me did not bode well. I am prepared to give her both the location of my stable in exchange for hearing me out. It was full of poisonous gas and dead bodies, but the words got the reaction I wanted. He immediately looked intrigued. In my opinion, you're too late. We're about to crush this war once and for all, but if you insist, I suppose I can take your request to her. He nodded to the acolytes. Search them. I did my best to hide my disappointment when they found the bobby pins under P 21's tail, and in his mane, and mouth. They gave me the same treatment, even taking off my eye patch to make sure I didn't have a grenade or something in there. Really, what were they expecting? Given that my busted braces were taped to my legs, they couldn't exactly check them. I really doubted they wanted to. No pony wanted to look at swollen, nasty pony flesh. After that, the armored ranger fell in behind us while Chief Acolyte Strike trotted in front. I hoped that the ranger was a real good shot if she decided to fire. We trot out to the dry docks and towards the pier the Celestia was tied up to. Once, she'd clearly been a magnificent ship, and even after two centuries, she possessed a strength and grandeur that I felt impressive. Three turrets two in the front and one towards the rear, pointed their barrels towards the city. And then I gaped as I saw one of the rear turret's cannon barrels slowly elevate. You got it to work? Rampage gaped in alarm. You've been working on this rust bucket for years. Indeed, and it is beginning to pay off. We fixed turret three months ago. Of course, the Elder resisted our many requests to fire it. There was a lack of proper ordinance, for one thing. No bullets, I asked in surprise. No shells, he corrected, and I suspected that the Orange Acolyte would have, a, would have been great buddies with textbook. The Celestia has been docked for a major refit at the time of the attack, and all her shells had been removed. Sadly, their bunker is buried under tons of debris, so too much to be practically cleared. So, while we possessed ample stocks of powder, we had no shells. Until recently, that is. He pointed to a crane that was lifting something out of the water, a dripping net with a suit of power armor hanging onto it. Fortunately, the Luna's ordinance was intact. Marvelous engineering. I saw that the armor had been modified with... Numerous air tanks. Clever, 